this is going to be on process design and simulation using Aspen Hisis. So now having said that, we'll go on and have a look on the overview of the course. The course will cover the broad aspects of uh, industrial practices in process design field, and then process simulation using Aspen Hisis. And we'll also be doing a project on the FlareNet design. So FlareNet is typically a software part of Aspen Hisis, which will be used to design the Flare system. Uh, design the flare system in the sense you will be sizing the vent lines, your relief valve inlet outlet lines, flare subheaders and flare headers. And then we'll be on to safety relief system design, which is typically the PSV design. Uh, we'll be doing the uh, pressure safety valves and then vacuum safety valves as well. Uh, we'll quickly run through the the different basics of scenario analysis and then we'll also have an overview of designing the same using Aspen Hisis. And then there is a depressurization technique. This is typically when there is fire, we shut down the plant and then we quickly depressurize the plant so that the content inside the vessel doesn't add up to the fire. So when we do that, we'll have issues of lower temperature and there are some guidelines which are to be followed for depressurization and we'll be having an overview on the depressurization techniques using Aspen Isis. And next part we'll also cover uh, atmospheric crude distillation column uh, like in refineries we have VDU, CDU, so crude distillation column and vacuum distillation columns. So we'll be there having a detailed view of a crude distillation column, how pump arounds work and details on that. So to whom this course will be interested, though all chemical engineers who are interested in entering into process design field are suitable to participate in the course. Now moving on to the next slide. So the course is being split into 12 modules and your first module will cover introduction to simulation. I will be getting to know what are the parameters required to converge a stream and how do we select components and different aspects of introduction to simulation. And in module two, we'll be covering hydraulics, which I mean uh, sizing of lines for liquids, for vapors, two phase, what are the criteria to be followed? And that will be covered in module two. Module three will give you different types of heat exchangers and tema types, their head, tail portion, and different parts of the heat exchangers will be covered. And module four, we can even size uh, the actual Software used for sizing is HDRI, most, most widely used in industry, but we'll try designing the heat exchanger using Aspen Isis option available. And then module five will give you uh, details of distillation column. We have different parameters that has to be looked on for designing distillation column and the basics of distillation column will be covered in module five. Module six, uh, we'll be briefing you how to design a column. Uh, there are various techniques. We'll go ahead with first defining a shortcut column and determining the minimum number of stages required, minimum reflux ratio, and the condenser duty and the reboiler duty. And based on that, we'll proceed to a detailed distillation column design using Aspen Isis. And module seven will give you overview of crude atmospheric distillation column. Uh, here, we'll be defining an assay and then using the assay data, we'll be generating hypocomponents. And using that hypocomponents, we'll be moving on to further design an atmo crude atmospheric distillation column. Module eight, as I have said earlier, uh, we'll be knowing of depressurization techniques used in the industry. And the, there is an utility available in Aspen Isis to determine the flow rates, and then to determine the minimum design temperature to be used. Uh, module nine will be on pressure safety valve and vacuum relief valve. Uh, we'll be covering the uh, criteria to be followed while designing. And we'll have an overview of uh, contingency analysis, which is the different over pressure scenarios. And then for vacuum relief valve, we'll be going on with API 2000 techniques and we'll try to design those valves. Module 10 will be the sizing pressure safety valves uh, using Aspen Hisis. Now, 
uh, latest versions have options to size the pressure safety valves as well. So we'll go ahead and do that using Aspenisys. And module seven will be on flare system design using flare net. And module 12 will be on separators. Now having explained the details of the course, we'll proceed to the next slide. So this is on the first module, which is introduction to process simulation. What is actually process simulation? There are two parts, process modeling and a simulation. So modeling is actually developing the mass and energy balance for each system or each unit operation, you can say. Then once you have developed all the equations, you will have to solve all those equations simultaneously to arrive at the solution. So that is what your simulators do. And they have a set of all equations built in for each unit operations. Once you give in your input parameters, they solve them uh, simultaneously at the background and will give you the end results directly. So when you have to develop mass balance, which is little tedious when you have to do for each unit operations, but then the model simulators have each unit operations built in. You just have to drag and drop those unit operations. And once you give the inputs, it automatically solves for the output. And the solving, there are different techniques used by different simulators. The most widely used are equation-oriented modeling and sequential solving method. Uh, equation-oriented is, uh, okay, first going on to the sequential solving, it is that every unit operation, once you drag and drop that, so before proceeding to the next unit operation, your first unit operation gets solved. Like if you first put in a stream, you have to define the stream completely so that the stream is converged. And then when you add the next unit operation, that specific unit operations get converged. Only then you can proceed on to the next uh, unit operation. So that is sequential solving method. And these are being used by Aspenisys, Unisim, Petrosim and other uh, simulators. Equation oriented solving is uh, you will have to use the stream and you have to develop the entire PF process flow diagram onto your uh, simulation mode. And at the end, you have uh, the entire flow sheet will be converged altogether. The advantages here are in sequential solving, you will get to know in, in which unit operation you have a problem to solve so that you can look into it and get it resolved before further proceeding onto your flow sheet. But when it comes to equation oriented solving, it does all together in the end when the entire flow sheet is completed. So therein you will have little more problems in determining your mistakes or your problem zone. And then rectifying it will be a little more complicated. And equation oriented solving were used in Aspen Plus. Now it's being converted to the other more methods. Now moving on to the next slide, what is process simulation? So as I had said, it is giving inputs. Your simulator solves the equations in the background and it will give you the outputs. So when it comes to stream, you have to define your flow, composition, equipment parameters for each unit operations. Those are your process inputs. As an output, you get the stream properties. And once you have done with the entire flow sheet, you can develop heat and material balance using that. Now, why do you need a process simulation? Uh, to generate heat and mass balance based on operating conditions of each unit operation. Now, when you have a plant, you need to know what is your required capacity of the plant. So once your required output is being fixed, you will have to work out to determine how much is your input required to generate your required output. So once you are done with that, there are some streams which are uh, maybe some more utility is required like steam or cooling water. So you need to determine those flow rates as well. So to have an entire heat and material balance across the plant, the simulation will be required. So once you are done with the entire flow diagram and solving them in the simulation, you can develop the heat and material balance across each equipment and that will be used to design that equipment. So say if the cooling water required for the heat exchanger and the duty for that heat exchanger. So once you are done with that, you can use those to develop data sheets of those heat exchangers. So for that purpose, your process simulation is required. And there you can also perform a sensitivity analysis. Like if you increase this flow rate, what is going to happen on your outlets? 
and you can also try to optimize your equipments to your required capacities and there are also dynamic simulations which are uh, used to train the operators we can generate operator training simulators using simulations and that will be used to train the plant operators and to analyze and do a what if analysis like when you increase the operating pressure of a column say what is going to happen on the purity of your outputs and ways like that so once you have an operator sim OTS of a plant you can change in parameters and you can also analyze what is going to happen if you change your operating pressures or your operating temperatures on the plant so this will help to predict uh, the effects of process upsets in the plant and it can be used for scaling up so once you have developed a laboratory level you can use the simulation to once it is matched with your laboratory results you can use the same parameters to scale it up to the industrial level so for all of these simulations will be helpful and now coming on you have two steady state simulation and dynamic simulation uh, steady state simulation is independent of time and this is flow driven process uh, it is used for designing purpose so steady state you will not uh, be able to analyze the dynamic effects but you can this uh, results can be used for designing the plant uh, so steady state is just at the end of process what is going to happen is what your results will show but in the course once you have changed the parameter so you will not know what is the course of changes which is going to happen but you will just straight away come to the end of the action what is going to come that is the steady state simulation when it comes to dynamic simulation it is dependent on time so once you have changed it will show you the sequence of uh, changes which is going to happen on the plant and these are pressure driven process so once you have changed the pressure your flow rate will change and what is going to happen on the downstream equipments can be analyzed using a dynamic simulation so our dynamic simulations are used for estimating surge volumes in pipelines and they are used to determine compressor settle out conditions in uh, industries and there are also other uses like developing operator training simulators and etc used for dynamic simulations coming on to the next slide this will just give you a different types of process simulators available in the industry uh, there are unisim aspen hisis aspen plus pro2 chemcad and the different suppliers are shown here uh, this slide will tell you on the degrees of freedom most of you would have uh, studied this in your chemical engineering to define a stream there are some degrees of freedom which are required not only a stream or the unit operation you will have to specify the minimum inputs which is required to converge the unit so uh, coming on to the degrees of freedom if it is generally the formula is c minus p plus 2 where c is the number of components and p is the phase and plus 2 is the equation what is being followed so if there are five components in a stream and they all exist in a single phase say liquid phase then we need we will have uh, 5 minus 1 plus 2 which is 6 degrees of freedom so where the six can be a composition of the four components and then you need to specify the temperature and pressure to completely define the stream yeah we'll have a detailed description on converging a stream in the four coming slides let's move on to the next slide uh, so here we'll have an overview of developing uh, steps involved in developing a model the simulation will be you build using the following basic steps so first you need to create a unit set which is to be followed for your entire simulation so this unit sets will help in for you to quickly when you click on the flow sheet you will be having values of temperature and pressure described on each stream so when you have a defined unit set it will be easier for you so that you don't have to every time do a unit conversion and check whether your parameters are matching with your required inputs so in that case your first step is to first generate an unit set which is to be used for your entire simulation the next step is to select the components which are to be used in the simulation for your whole uh, simulation now once your components are being selected you will have to go ahead and select a property package which is appropriate for your uh, selected components and for your intent of use 
So once you have just selected your property package, you can go on and then create and specify the feed streams install and define the unit operations which are like if you have a you say your flow sheet has got an inlet and then a heat exchanger your outlet and then utility inlet and utility outlet so your first step is to select the components converge the stream and then provide the inputs for the heat exchanger which is the duty and the duty or the outlet temperature which is being critical for you and then you have to specify the flow rates for each feed stream and uh, that's how it goes on. So once we are doing it, we'll be able to explain it in detail. So now we'll move on to the next slide. So component selection. Now coming on to component selection, there are already set of uh, predefined components available in the database. So we can use those components, which are, uh, it'll, you can select any number of components and then use them in your uh, simulation if you don't have the actual component sometimes you need to generate a hypo component say you have a test data from your laboratory you know the density of the content what you are using and you have other properties then you can develop a hypo component which will actually replicate that uh, component which is being tested in your laboratory you can use that component for uh, you are using it in the simulation the next is also when we have ASTM assay data, say for the crude, we generally get the ASTM distillation data, either the 86 or other data from the plant. So you have those data which are actually volume fraction versus your true boiling point. You can use that data to develop a set of hypo components which will replicate the crude what we have in the simulation environment. And that can be used for sizing and developing heat and material balance for the stream.